Hello everyone, it's good to have you here again. And today we are going to talk about a topic which will be very useful for your literary research. It's called close reading. You have heard the term close reading so many times by now, I believe. The first time I introduced this term to you was back when you were in the second semester in inferential reading class. And today I will uh, tell you again what close reading is, what are its elements and how you practice close reading. And at the end of the video, I will show you an example or a practice of close reading or close reading in action. All right, to make things easier, let us now go to the screen that I have prepared for you. First of all, it's about close reading. What is it? Basically, close reading is an act of reading in order to know the literal and inferential meanings then to comprehend the text, okay? To comprehend as many, as, as many aspects of the text as possible. Or I would like to use the term as many facets of the text as possible, okay? So by now you already know that it includes literal reading and inferential reading. And later on you will gain as many facets of the text as possible. And what are the facets? We will talk about that later. So this is basically the definition of close reading. And when we talk about close reading, there are three elements that you need to also know as things that you will find in an act of close reading. What are they? First of all, it includes literal reading. You will need to do a regular reading where you try to find what is explicit on the text, okay? that is uh, literal reading. And here we also have a class in called literal reading, right? And I believe there, I don't need to say too much about this one as you are already familiar with what literal reading is. And later on, we also talk about inferential re reading. It is uh, an activity of reading to get the implicit meanings of a text and implicit meanings can include, for example, theme, tones, connotative meanings, the motivation of the writer, the audience, and anything surrounding the text, either during the production and also during the reception or the act of reading. So when you do um, close reading, you will need to consider this as well. This is what you will need to gain, what you need to pursue in uh, close reading. And the third thing is uh, you will also have to do critical reading. And basically critical reading includes literal reading and inferential reading, but in it, you also include the elements of evaluating, evaluating your texts, whether uh, you don't just believe in what your text says, but you will uh, evaluate that and you will be suspicious about that. Uh, skepticism is the keyword here. But if you want to talk about critical reading as uh, in its actual meaning, the act of critical reading will also have to doubt or we also have to question your own understanding of the text. So not only will you uh, become suspicious of the text, you doubt the text, but you will also doubt your own understanding of it. All right, so it's very deep. When you get to this level, then uh, your writing will become rich because it will, uh, it will dig or it will uncover various levels of the meanings, but it will also be a bit more, I would say challenging instead of saying confusing, okay? All right, but in general, when you do close reading, you will involve um, in literal reading, first of all, and then inferential reading. And last one, you will also do critical reading, at least to evaluate the text. Now, you must be questioning, uh, how can you do close readings, uh, practically speaking? So these are actually common things, but you might not have realized that what you do is part of close reading. The first one is, we try to cut the text into chunks. If a short story has, for example, three paragraphs, 
then you will cut them into three parts so that you can focus on each of the paragraphs. Okay. You chunk the text into uh, many to make it easier to focus on each individual chunk. However, later on, after you're done with the individual chunk, you will have to relate it back to the general meaning or the whole text. Or in short, you will check your understanding of the small chunks against the whole text to make sure that it is still related. Again, what I often emphasize is that literary works are not supposed to be chopped into pieces. They're not supposed to be dissected like cadaver or dead bodies, okay? So that's the first one. You cut the text into chunks, smaller chunks, so that you can focus on each individual chunk. And later on, this is also common. You will underline or circle or give marks or highlights parts of the text that can potentially mean something, okay? That has some uh, potential meaning that fits with your purpose, okay? So if you, for example, are looking for uh, the representation of um, animals in one text, then if you find a passage, a phrase, or a sentence, or a word that somewhat relates to that, you will highlight it, or underline it, or circle it. So that's uh, what you do when you do close reading. You're familiar with this, right? Okay. Now we are going to the third part, which not everyone does, I would say which is making side notes for, well, important parts, but um, literal. Important parts can be if the story is about somebody buying a doll from, uh, from Amazon, then that's what you write as a side note. Usually you put uh, the, the literal meaning here on the left side, okay? Left side of the text, which means before the text. Okay, you put it on the left side of the text. So it, what, why do you do that? The purpose of doing that is for you to be able to, to find which part of the text talks about something. Basically, it will be your, uh, your mark. If you want to find a scene where the character buys something from Walmart or from Amazon, you write that in the note. So that's the... the third part, which is making side notes for important parts of the text. And the fourth part will be making side notes, but this time for deeper meanings of the text, for the implicit meanings. And how do you do that? Usually we do that by writing something on the right. If, for example, the act of buying something from, uh, from Amazon here, in your opinion, represents something or, for example, represents the main character's consumptiveness, then you write consumptive individual on the right side of the text, okay? If, let me just show it to you here. Uh, you can see my screen, I believe. So here, if you see, hold on, okay. If you see this one, this text, and you think it means something, then you put something on the right of the, on the left of the text here to talk about the actual meaning. Okay. For example, buying something. If the text says about buying something. And later on, if you think that it means something else, then you write here on the text consumptiveness. This is the right part is for the uh, inferential meaning of the text. So that's, uh, I will just show you elsewhere to give you a better example than using this, okay? All right. So uh, these are basically what you do when you do close reading. Not so complex because you are familiar with this already. And now let me show you how to apply all of these elements in an actual reading of a text. Now, let me go to uh, another file. There you are. 
It's a story by U. Bam Steinberg. The story is called Taylor Swift. It won a, a writing contest in 2017, I believe. Now, uh, you will be able to write to read this text uh, elsewhere. I will give you the link here on uh, YouTube. But uh, this is what I wanted to show you, okay? If you do close reading, this is what you will do. First of all, you will read it. You're in love, it's great. You swipe on your phone and order. The next day, a Taylor Swift shows up. A Taylor Swift clone shows up at your door. It's not awkward, it's everything you want. She knows all her songs and she sings them just for you, blah, 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 and so on. You hit Taylor Swift. That's the end of the first paragraph. Now, you might think that there is something potentially meaningful here which is buying clones online here. So this, you might want to underline it, okay? Just underline it, you put underline here. And you think it means something, but you're not sure yet. So for now, you might only want to uh, give um, a note saying that it's about the act of buying. Maybe it will be important later. So on the left here, to talk about the implicit, explicit meaning, you write buying clone online. And then you continue reading and reading and reading. But then you come up with, oh, you remember, maybe it means that it represents the easiness or the ease with which we can buy characters, objects, people, or um, let us say, maybe it represents some kind of age in which things are easy. Okay, so you're right over here on the right, the implicit meaning, the ease of internet. Uh, how internet makes the act of what objectifying uh, things or women easily, easier. So you write here, the ease of internet in objectification or uh, internet makes objectification of women easier. Now uh, I am being very uh, uh, strict here, uh, what, very uh, sharp here. I, I'm sorry, I just lose the word. So this is basically what you do. You uh, put them, you, you cut them into smaller chunks, just like what you did to paragraph one, you focus more on paragraph one. And then when you find something interesting or potentially meaningful, you underline it or you highlight it. And uh, on the left, to help you find it easier later on or to mark certain parts, you write the uh, explicit meaning. But if you think that this line has some implicit meaning, you write on the right here, another side note to show what it might potentially mean. And then you will continue reading and so on and so forth. And oh, here uh, you find, why are you being so mean to me? Hmm, what does it mean? It sounds so familiar. Oh yeah, yeah. It's from a uh, Taylor Swift song. So you write here, uh, quoting Taylor Swift song. Maybe it will be useful if you study something related to intertextuality, for example, mean and so on and so forth. So these are what I can show you, okay, to do uh, close reading. You cut the text into small chunks and then uh, you underline certain parts that might be meaningful. You write another a side note on the left if, if you think you need to uh, highlight some explicit meaning. And if you find an implicit meaning to that, you write your interpretation on the right and uh, this is only first part, right? 
if you have re read the entire uh, story, then you can check your understanding of this first part here against the entire story. Does it fit well? If it doesn't fit well, then you must be questioning. You must uh, question yourself whether your interpretation was right or was it too much and so on. All right, so I think that's all I have to say about closed reading. I hope uh, showing you this can give you, well, a general picture of what closed reading is by knowing, for example, the three elements, the literal reading, the inferential reading, and the critical reading. And also, I hope it can also, it can help you uh, give the, it, it can help you understand the stages to do that, which is um, the four elements that I just mentioned to you. And uh, I hope my interpretation of Taylor Swift also can, I don't know, inspire you to do uh, an analysis on a work that might work for your thesis. Okay, everyone, I think that's all. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.